In this video, I'll be comparing Mustelidae and Mephididae skulls and going over some general characteristics of these families. So Mustelidae would include all of the weasels, otter, badger, wolverine, martens, etc. You can recognize these skulls, well first of all, you'll recognize that they're carnivores, they have the big teeth. You'll know that they're not dogs or cats or bears or raccoons based on all of the teeth and skull morphology. Specifically, I mean, it's too small to be a bear. It has too sharp of teeth and too few of teeth to be a raccoon. Its snout is too long to be a cat and it just doesn't have the right shape to be a dog. Um, another thing, especially for the smaller species, not all the bigger ones, um, the Mustelidae has this back molar that's kind of swung inward and more of a dumbbell shape, perpendicular to the other teeth. So that is pretty clearly a Mustelid. But you might get it confused with a skunk, which has a similar shape of a skull. But the one thing you can do to really differentiate these is look at the palate. So what I'm talking about is right here, this palate ends right there. You can see how it kind of drops off right at the line where the teeth end. If you look at Mustelid, that keeps going. And then if you look at any of these other Mustelids like this, Wolverine, it also keeps going. So again, use the shape of the skull, the size of the skull, the number of the teeth, the shape of the teeth, and then you might end up as a situation where you're trying to figure out if it's a skunk or a mustel, and then use the palate. So then, another thing to know about mustelid skulls is that their mandibular fossa is very tightly articulated. Now what I mean by that, mandibular fossa is this right here. This is the groove where the mandible the lower jaw articulates or connects. So if we're looking at this species, it locks in there really tightly to the point where it holds on by itself. Don't do this at home. And you can see, possibly, just how much that overlaps and grabs onto the lower jaw. And this is good for mustelids that are grabbing and thrashing prey around. In comparison to this dog, like, it comes off of the groove no problem. It's not very tightly articulated because it doesn't need to be. In some cases, like this otter, it's so tightly articulated that I cannot remove the lower jaw. Last thing to know about mustelids overall, and actually this is not just mustelids, it's lots of um, mammals, is this bone here, it's called a baculum, or the os penis. This is the penis bone. Um, carnivores have this, um, especially in mustelids, it can be useful for aging males. So depending on the shape and size and structure of the baculum, you can figure out how old the male is. This here is a wolverine penis bone, and this here is a badger. Now these bones are in all carnivores, most primates except humans and some other um, specific male groups, or specific mammal groups.